hello, hello, hello guys, and welcome back to Joe's Ventures, and today we're doing something quite different, and really excited because I've really wanted the chance to talk about more of the dinosaur documentaries, because I'm a big fan of dino documentaries, especially Prehistoric Planet, and uh, Walking with Dinosaurs, Walking with Beasts, all those kind of OG ones, and all documentaries in between, I like talking about that, but often because of, I don't want to dip into the copyright, because I know copyright is heck, well, is so annoying, and I don't really want to dip into that, I was going to do something a little different, but here is my chance, because this is being made by a really talented group of people, and I thought, uh, that I know well, and I thought I may as well make a great video on this because this is definitely worth everyone's attention it's uh well i'll get into what it is obviously of course but forgotten bloodlines um argate is a really really awesome and um, we'll get more into it but we'll watch the trailer this is the kickstarter trailer Twenty million years ago the beginning of the miocene epoch although seemingly familiar this is a world of wonder, mystery, and danger. From tiny rhinos, the size of dogs, to bizarre horse-like giants with claws instead of hooves, and a pig-like behemoth with jaws that could crush bones. A world forgotten to time, never seen by the eyes of man, until now. This is the incredible story of two of America's most astounding bygone beasts. Step back into an ancient world Forgotten Bloodlines Agar. Please support us on Kickstarter now live. So that is the trailer for the Kickstarter. So we'll have a look at that. So here's the Kickstarter here for Forgotten Bloodlines uh, Agate. Oh, um, Agate, Agate Springs. Agate Springs is probably the one's most commonly referred to. But we're going to have a look through here. We can see all the different. Um, it's at the moment this has only been out for probably a day or so by the time of recording but we've already got uh twelve thousand or twelve and a half thousand new zealand dollars already we're exciting to go through all these uh projects i'm really excited to have a look at that but um we buy max max is a really great if you guys have seen max's channel he's done like a couple of like accurate edits of jurassic world kind of movies and i'm really excited to see him put his uh dip his toes and things like this because he's just phenomenal at creating like uh rendered images 3d models things like that but it's really really awesome but we're going to be starting off with basically everything so what is forgotten bloodlines so forgotten bloodlines agate is a photorealistic animated documentary focusing on prehistoric creatures 20 million years ago narrated by the wonderful nigel marvin so this place it takes place in the early miocene in the agate fossil beds which is one of the richest uh, fossil collections uh, of that time. And the, uh, the Miocene, especially the beginning of the Miocene, is a really weird time because we're kind of familiar with mammals, but there's a lot of weird mammals. Mammals that are familiar to us are weird, like, uh, as I mentioned, rhinos, uh, small as horses, and then you have big, like, almost like gorilla horses that look like giraffes almost. And you have these weird bear dogs and, uh, and talodonts that are like... Uh, murder hippos or hell pigs are also called terminator pigs but yeah really really awesome but um keep on including strange horse-like animals and huge meat-eating hippo ancestors so over the course of three 15 minute episodes you'll be taking back to a place forgotten to time learn more about fossil bloodlines.com we'll talk about that later uh forgotten bloodlines is uh, named after our goal to showcase prehistoric life that is often overlooked, which is perfectly cool. The Miocene, I think, is overlooked because it's a really weird time. Obviously, you have the times like the time of the dinosaurs, 
that's often covered a lot. And then you have like the Ice Age that's covered quite a bit, and that's because it's got a lot of human history as well. And there's other bits that get kind of forgotten, like especially like the beginning of the Cenozoic is kind of skipped over, and the Paleozoic. There's often not many documentaries on that, but this is kind of one of those forgotten bloodline things that I'm really excited to talk about. So. This is the uh, name of goal to uh, over look at overlooked kind of prehistoric life. We want to shed a lot on those beautifully interesting ecosystems that existed in the past beyond what we have used to seeing. So Agate is merely a subtitle indicating the theme of this mini-series. So if this project is successful, more Forgotten Bloodlines episodes will be produced, focusing on life as never put to screen before. So I imagine there is a lot of potential with this. Uh, forgotten Bloodlines is kind of looking at the underdogs or the animals that are not quite covered a lot in pop culture. So basically anything that's just not... not ha No Hal Creek really, I don't think. Nothing like that. No like late Ice Age, unless it's something really underrated. So just Forgotten... Forgotten things, things that aren't really shown often in a really interesting light. So this is really something that's made kind of uh, by the people for the people. This is people that love uh, prehistoric life and all the weird and wackiness and really in the nitty gritty of it and then trying to bring that more popular so people can learn about some of the really weird animals that did we did live, share our world with, the biodiversity of the past, which is so cool. So um, for a project uh, this unique, mainstream studios are not able to provide what we need. So, uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, very much like indie, pretty much. It's made by a few people uh, in their spare time at the moment. Uh, but um, really interesting to see that. So, for a project like this, uh, obviously you need your help. This is why they're doing the Kickstarter. This first campaign covers only episode one out of three. But if the stretch goals are met, all three episodes will be fully funded. And more details below. So, let's have a look. We'll explain the stretch goals and everything. And he's a great example of one of those animals. This is um, Stenomylus, which is a camel. It's a camelid, so it's related to llamas, uh, alpacas, and camels of today. But it occupies a very different different niche because uh, camels originally came from North America. And basically, this is uh, the Af uh, the African ver well, not the African, the American version of an antelope, which is pretty interesting and uh, really really cool. I do love these guys. Uh, very interesting camelid. So, stretch goals. So, this current campaign only funds the first uh, out of three episodes. However, if we can reach 200,000, two can be completed. And if 350,000, uh, if all three, uh, all three can be completed if 350,000 are raised. So, that's really cool. While funding is just for that pilot episode will be amazing. It would be even better if the miniseries can be funded. So, let's just give as much money as we can. It, um, this is something that I think... If you guys love prehistoric life, this is something you should definitely put your money into. Definitely something worth your time because you're going to get something very unique. And I know the people personally uh, from the internet uh, or through the internet uh, that are making this. So it's really interesting. They think of a lot of things really, really awesome. So um, we're going to have a look at the plot. So this is a story-driven miniseries following two extraordinary animals as they fight to survive in uh, Agate Springs, or this turbulent landscape. Uh, the first start is Deodon, which is a predatory relative of pigs and hippos, but the size and strength of a bison. The second is Moropus, which is a mammal related to horses, but is twice the size as a horse, and possesses these large deadly claws instead of hooves, uh, which would be for not for killing things, so they could probably scratch you up pretty bad, they would be most likely for feeding. But um, over the course of the story, you'll see them grow and struggle throughout their lives over multiple years in a changing environment, at a time where the forests of the past were kind of shifting to the North American prairies as we know today. So this has a very interesting bit of history as well, because America used to be covered and more forested, and during the Miocene, the world kind of dried out and cooled down as well and going into the Pleistocene so this is kind of the beginning of that opening of the landscape very much um, to how we look at it today so it's the story of America pretty much so it's even though it's underrated this is it it applies to us today because it tells us a lot about how kind of North America today became how it is especially at this time because it's very much like uncanny you you can see the environment looks very similar very similar plants and animals but they just look slightly different like this doesn't look too different from like a giraffe or an okapi or a big kudu but it's definitely way different so and that's kind of the uncanny valley of this that i think i love because it's 
it's just recognizable enough that you can say, yeah, this is definitely not alien, but there's weird animals and weird things and the modern ancestors, the ancient ancestors of modern animals that look very different. So I think it's really, really cool. And you can see this is Moropus, which is a species of Calicothere, which is a group of animals related to horses. They're perissodactyls, so they're related to horses, tapirs, and rhinos. But um, very, very different looking, as you can see here. Let's see if we can click on the image. No, we can't, but that's okay. They weighed as much as giraffe, but they were related to horses. And one thing as well, if you guys love science, this is scientific rigor. So, Forgotten Bloodlines Agate uh, aims to depict the most scientifically accurate representation of Miocene life if it's put to screen. So most depictions of the era, uh, most depictions of life from this era, uh, the ones that do exist, are either outdated or low quality, uh, but we are determined to change that. So heavily researched and aided by scientific advisors in their field, we will present this odd yet strangely familiar ecosystem in the realest way possible. So that's what I love. I love the nitty gritty. I love learning. And this is going to be basically as accurate as possible as we can know. With speculative, while speculative behavior is included, make sure it's based on logical reasoning and balanced with direct known fossil evidence. And we also aim to make this educational, but we also dynamic and enthralling as we examine the lives of prehistoric animals may have led. So it's a little bit dramatized as most document, good documentaries would be, but um, it's based in reality. It's kind of telling an interesting story while being based in reality. So that's basically perfect. And everything is basically up to snuff in terms of the latest science and everything. So that's really, really cool. And you can see here is Intelodon. So this is Deodon, which is an Intelodont, which was kind of the latest and greatest, so you could say. Uh, these mammals actually resemble boars, you can see here, but they were related to hippos, and they have quite a nasty bone-crushing teeth and those big jaws, things like that. So how will your donation be used? So we want this mini-series to be as best as it can be, uh, the best it can be and possibly in all aspects. Unfortunately, creating a 3D animated film is quite expensive, and that is why we need your help. This has been a passion project for our moderately sized yet incredibly talented team for almost three years, working unpaid and using own sums of money to film the project at this point. And animation takes a very long time, and we can't continue uh, to pursue this ambitious project without paying our artist salaries to work full time, as with most creative things, it's, is how it is. All funds will be going towards paying the wonderful members of our team to put their heart and soul into their craft, and the majority of which will go towards animation, uh, with a smaller portion funding music, concept art, and marketing. So basically just to pay the team so they can make it for you, pretty much. And with your help, we can pay the best artists in the industry a fair wage, and uh, that allows us to fully, fully re uh, realize this truly special documentary. And that's um, really, really cool. And here's another cool animal here from uh, the uh, Agate. So here we've got uh, Melaceros, which is a tiny dog-sized rhinoceros with males having V-shaped horns and tusks for fighting. So uh, why donate? So why should you donate? And if this campaign gets fully funded, the first episode of the miniseries will be completed and will be used as a pilot to gain support to develop the rest of it. If all the uh, stretch goals are met, the entire series will be produced, plus even more Forgotten Blood Eyes content to come. Uh, a successful Kickstarter not only means this one project will be concluded, but it opened the doors for many, many more prehistory pre shows in the future. So really, really cool. And you can see this adorable foal. She's very, very cute. She explores her forest and environment. Very, very cute. So um, where can we watch it when it releases? Uh, that's a very interesting question. But um, our release date is currently unknown, and as due to the nature of this project, we cannot confidently say a release date until we have secure funding. Until this, uh, we aim this uh, for this mini series to release on an acceptable streaming pro uh, service or potentially YouTube. That would be awesome. Regardless of the public release method, uh, early backers or all backers will get free access uh, once it's completed. Free early access as well. And you can see another really beautiful. Uh, the sun rises over an ancient savanna millions of years ago. The American prairies were covered in a patches of forest called the Oak Savanna, a habitat which has severely depleted since then. Really, really interesting. And rewards. You can see here, rewards goes for as little as $5 to as much as $1,000. So updates on specific rewards, such as physical prints, will be provided later, as this page didn't launch until early 2023. However, here are some previews of what we can expect from our upcoming digital art book, uh, art book. 
Uh, there's much more to come and I can't wait for you to see all the artwork that's released. So you can see here's a female um, Sidicurus, which is a really, really cool animal. It's kind of a weird relative, I believe, of pronghorns, so one of those weird animals. Uh, I may be wrong on that though. Uh, here we have Deodon, which is uh, obviously the concept for the Intelodont, done by Midiao Deo, which is really cool. And then we have another Stephen Milet set, that weird antelope camel, a uh, really nice like lighting study, things like that. And there's another sketch as well, uh, sitting in the herd, really, really awesome. So, as we get all excited for this, this is the risk and challenges. So, it's a very uh, ambitious project, and because of the crowdsorting nature, we may actually run into step backs and other challenges, most things like this. It kind of comes with the nature of donating to something like this. Well, these challenges are expected, delays means we'll have more time to create the highest quality product we possibly can. Regardless of what happens, we'll push through and keep you updated every step of the way. So really, really awesome. So really, really big fan of that. And so as we mentioned, you can go through the different pledges. So you get your name in the credits as a backer, and then you have early access to the finished film, and plus all previous rewards if you pledge 10. Uh, highly exclusive, I would love those, like the wallpapers. Uh, original soundtrack you can get as well. The digital art book would also be very awesome. Uh, if you guys are into 3D printing, you can get the um, files to print them out yourself. So you get the Moropus, which is the Calicathere, and the Intelodon Theodon, those 3D files. That'd be very awesome, actually. Uh, single uh, signed physical prints. So you can receive a signed print with an image in size of your choosing. The frame is included. No frame included in the backer must pay for shipping, of course. Um, here we have, oh, that would be awesome, 3D painted statues of Deodon and uh, Moropus. So you get a high quality resin statue of either Deodon or Moropus. Backer must pay for shipping, of course. Um, all good with that. Uh, 175 or more, you get any animal you want. So you get a high quality resin print of any animal of your choice that's featured in the documentary. So that's pretty cool. And you also have, for $250, uh, you have blender file access, so you get access to a few blender files of our animals. Uh, see how we create them and use them and uh, use it please in the 3D software. As long as you create it appropriately and don't resell, we distribute, so that's pretty cool. Um, and $500 uh, dollars or more, you have uh, additional animal of your choice. So if you really want to have an animal from Agate Springs that you want to put in, they're obviously not going to put in T-Rex if you ask, because that didn't live in Agate Springs. That was already extinct for at least 40, 50 million years before then, pretty much, or even like 40, 50 million years. So no T-Rexes, no Brachiosaurus, nothing big and weird. But there are a lot of animals from Miocene, Nebraska, uh, that could uh, potentially make their way in. So if you pledge $500 or more, you can open to a vast array of diversity because you won't be able to showcase every animal, but with your help, you'll be able to. Backers can choose an animal from the Northern Harrison Formation in Nebraska that will be added in the film. A list of potential animals will be provided. So if you donate that, you can have your little list and you can decide which animal you put in the documentary. So you can have a say on what gets in there. And really, really cool one here. Uh, pledge uh, US t uh, thousand or more, you get a custom Easter egg. So that includes uh, a head reference of your choice in the film. And keen eyed uh, viewers were able to spot your custom Easter egg. That'd be pretty awesome. It'd be cool to someone sneak something about, like, uh, some just something other paleo media, like maybe a Walking with Beasts one, since Intelodonts are featured a lot in that one. A lot of the species are featured in that as well. That's the only like big Miocene documentary I can think of in my head, but that's not even that's more covering the Cenozoic. But yeah, really, really awesome. And plus, every reward you get also has the previous digital real rewards as well. So everything pretty much, uh, which is really, really awesome. So if you guys want to uh, give your money, of course, you gotta have that. But really, really awesome. So yeah, um, I really think people should donate to this. It's a really uh, unique opportunity to be part of something that could be very interesting. And especially with this big resurgence in prehistoric documentaries, even just recently, we've had Prehistoric Planet just the beginning of last year, and then you had um, also the uh, Dinosaur coming out, which is that one with Stephen Fry, uh, which is pretty... I've heard mixed reviews, mostly bad reviews, I'll be honest, but... With this popularity of more documentaries coming out, especially like there's uh, Tim Haynes who did Walking with Dinosaurs is doing another one. 
I can also think of uh, some Netflix ones coming out, Life in Our Planet, I think it's called. So uh, it's very much something that's going to be like uh, coming in the future. People want to see more dinosaurs and prehistoric life in documentaries because of prehistoric planet. So this is the perfect time to monopolize on that opportunity and get this and have something that's more unique and really truly made by the people that love learning and uh, writing and just love these animals to death and want to show them to you in a realistic way and basically make them as realistic and as entertaining as possible so really really awesome but we're not going to leave it at there i've decided that we're going to have a look at the official opening scene so we might have a little look through we'll watch it first and then we'll go through and do a little bit of commentary as well so uh it won't be probably as engaging as the wonderful Nigel, Nigel Marvin's commentary, but we'll have a look at it anyway. This is Agat Springs. 20 million years ago, the beginning of the Miocene. This savanna will one day become the badlands of Nebraska. Not long ago, these plains were lush and heavily forested, nurtured by volcanic ash spread by wind and rain. But as the global climate begins to shift, conditions are becoming increasingly arid. This brings hardship for the native fauna. It's now the peak of the dry season and a small group of Stenomylus gather around what remains of a rapidly shrinking watering hole. Despite appearing similar to antelope, the lanky herbivores are actually an early form of camel. These relict puddles provide a lifeline for all manner of animals. This also makes them an ideal hunting ground for predators. Deodon, one of the few animals that benefits from the harsh conditions of the dry spell. This individual is a young male, only having recently left the care of his mother. But he's already a formidable hunter. Weakened from the heat and focused on water, the Stenomylus should be easy prey. If he can catch one, that is. But it seems even a weakened camel can outrun a Deodon in a straight chase. Only one out of every ten hunts is likely to be successful. His hunger will drive him to try again, and an animal of his size must feed soon. So that's already come out, but we're going to have a quick look at that. Well, we'll just look at the credits first. I have to say, I really, really do love that um uh, soundtrack i love the like the chorus as like the deodons come in and it really gives an interesting vibe to it uh, so i really really like that but you can see here we'll, we'll pause that we'll look through quick commentary you can see it's kind of mentioning how during that time in the like early miocene the world was becoming a little bit drier and potentially a little bit cooler so what was happening is that america before that was very much covered in forests uh, pretty much from like east to west and west to east and everywhere it was basically covered in forest but at this time the world was starting to cool down and starting to dry out 
So what was happening is that these forests in America were getting uh, basically thinned out and then converted into prairies. So a lot of the animals are kind of like transitional forms within that. So that's really, really interesting. So we can have a look and we'll have a look at this. Heavily forested. Oh, we weren't going to listen to that, but we'll have a look. And you can see some of the changes. Also, this place, a lot of volcanic ash, which really does help with preserving things as well. So that helps preserves fossils and things like that. But you can see uh, it's also quite a bit richer because of all the fossils and um, all the volcanic ash that helps uh, give lots of nutrients to the plants, which is really, really cool. You can see that there. And you can see the um, Stephanias, I believe you say that, or Stenicus, we say that. Not Stenicus. Uh, Stephanias. I said this before and I can't even remember it, but anyway, these wonderful little dudes, uh, Stephanias, I believe you say that, or Stephisteros, whatever, but um, these wonderful little guys here, as mentioned before, these guys are more closely related to camels than they are to typical antelopes, but you can see they've convergent, uh, evolved, they convergently evolved to look like them because they occupy a similar niche in the ecosystem, as because the world wasn't so connected at the time, uh, a lot of animals kind of converge the same things because these guys would have evolved in America. As I mentioned, uh, there were no bovids, there were no antelope in America. So these guys started, took that niche and they're related to camels, so related to uh, llamas, alpacas and camels in today. So it's really, really cool. And you can see them all hanging around drinking at the waterhole. Scene very typical of you'd see in an African savannah documentary, not too different. And all hanging out doing their thing as in the dry season. Really, really cool. And you see this wonderful little bird here. And then we see Deodon. So this is Deodon, which is uh, also, people do call them like hell pigs. I like murder hippos. I like that kind of term more. Because it gives a little bit more to what they're actually related to. So Entelodonts were a group that lived in the Miocene around that time. There was a few different species of them. And they were kind of uh, this really interesting like omnivorous uh, big pig quote-unquote they were more related to hippos and whales which is quite interesting they're in the group whippermorpha but these guys very very interesting you think like in the modern ecosystem you think dominated by big cats and dogs and uh, bears but these guys were kind of the bears of their time they were very much omnivores from what we know some had some species or genera had more leans to uh, being herbivores or carnivores and other i believe deodon was very much carnivorous at, to a larger extent so they would obviously still very much like bears they would they'd eat they'd obviously hunt things but they would eat plants as well it's a bit of a mix probably just depends on where they are they're, they're on that seafood diet they see food they eat it but these day are done very very interesting uh, in terms of their ecology you think like they're basically a bear and i think that's just so cool but it's not a bear it's a basically hippo bear and i think it's kind of goes in that forgotten bloodlines thing it's something that's like familiar to us because we know what a hippo or a pig looks like but it's so different from what we expect so i think it kind of meets in the middle it almost gives us that uncanny valley effect and i think that really helps with this documentary so it's familiar enough that you like get drawn in but it's weird enough that it makes it seem unique so i quite like that and then you can see here he's kind of roaming around I mentioned it's this is a young bull this has probably got to do with the story young bull uh, that's run away from his mother so probably just uh, legging it on his own which is really really cool and you can see he's hunting uh, hiding in the bush uh, they were probably not too good runners but you can see chasing of course uh, chafing chasing this little guy not chafing but I really like that animation I love seeing it run that was really really awesome then you can see he's kind of given up um, Probably not worth uh, chasing uh, something like that too far. And he mentions one in ten hunts fail. Typically for large animals, uh, hunts more often fail than succeed. Even smaller animals like uh, cats, small cats, even like 50% of their kills tend to be um, failures or their attempts. So like one in two. But larger animals, they tend to be much often, more often than not, failures. So that shows that not everything is hunting all the time killing everything a lot of times animals fail they'll go hungry it's kind of just uh the luck it's luck it's nature's not extremely brutal sometimes a lot of animals fail most of the time and it's not that extraordinary <laughs> you know it's actually getting killing something is pretty extraordinary because it takes so much effort and it's showing how much effort it's taking even for this deodon that's chasing like really uh sick and or even um weakened uh uh 
Stephanus, if you do Stetho, Stephacarus or something like that. Well, how have you said it? I said it right before, but I don't know why, but it really shows that. But yeah, really, really cool. And shows that also, this is uh, kind of gives us a little insight to his personality. This is a younger male. He's just got um, left his mother, so he's kind of finding his way in the world. It's a, a very relatable story for, I think, a lot of us, uh, you know, getting under your, off your mother's... Um, under your mother's wing and kind of going out into the world and figuring out yourself it's a very relatable story and very entertaining as well but obviously done through the lens of a very educational and scientifically accurate documentary but yeah really really cool so um yeah then he walks off and decides he's going to hunt something another day and then we can see some credits to some really awesome people we can see uh, nigel marfin as well uh some people that are involved in writing in the story uh, really, really awesome, and voicing, and uh, modeling, and things, not voicing, modeling, I don't know why I said that, but yeah, really, really cool, and you can see all the people involved, uh, rendering, really, really cool, very interesting group of people doing this, and then you can see that there, so yeah, really, really awesome, so uh, I think we'll leave on that image, I think that looks really nice, so if you guys feel like it, if you guys really do like this project, and you want to give to something that you think will really, uh, give a unique allow a unique vision to kind of come to fruition and be able to watch something and learn something about a really underrated time if you want to learn about these forgotten bud lights uh, bloodlines in uh, the argus springs if you really want to learn about that donate and obviously if these guys get so much more money than expect that does not mean that they will stop at this they may go other places they may go to the paleozoic they may go to the uh, Cenozoic, then uh, more of the Metaz uh, Cenozoic, they may even go to the Mesozoic, whatever. But um, yeah, this is, I think it's less of investing in the documentary, and I think it's more investing in the team, because the team are very creative from what I've seen, and also they have a drive just to tell stories about prehistoric life. And isn't that uh, what we want? And the only thing holding them back from telling great stories pretty much is the money, so. A little bit your money helps them tell these wonderful stories so um yeah on that note i think a very inspirational note i think we will end this video so um i uh, really 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 hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys like and subscribe always remember hit the little bell icon to get notified about anything so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video hope you guys like and subscribe and bye